Thank you for being with us. We're discussing today COVID-19, the opening of the airports and the consequences. What are we going to expect? With me, if you're just joining us, Professor Mark Brinkard, Mr. Warren Zara, and uh, linking up by Skype is Shadow Minister of Health, the Honourable Dr. Stephen Spiteri. Good evening, Dr. Spiteri. Good evening. Hi to Professor Brunkat and Mr. Zara. Good evening. Good evening. Um, how, how, I hope you're well. What are your thoughts on this new stage of, of the pandemic? Basically, uh, we're in a stage right now of containment in terms of uh, the frontiers and the airports, the ports uh, that are closed. And so we are in a state where basically we are contained in terms of people who can come over into our country and possibly infect us with the virus or introduce uh, a viral infection. However, as we're seeing uh, all around Europe, as the frontiers are opening up and airports are uh, instead of being closed down, being open to tourists and whoever is traveling, we are seeing an increased uh, rate and a rise in infections and cases of COVID-19. Uh, this is going to be expected uh, in our islands as our, our airports are going to be opened very soon. And we have to be on the alert and possibly uh, stay uh, quite uh, on the on the uh, edge to see if our numbers are going to increase because this might affect our local transmission and possibly our infection rate mm -hmm. right now our r factor which is most commonly interpreted as the number which uh, dictates how we are doing in terms of the viral infection is below one however if this rises uh, to a certain extent where we see it uh, going up or we see a trend of the infections going upwards, we have to be on the alert as this might cause uh, a, an increased uh, rate of admissions into our hospitals, an increased rate of uh, morbidity and even mortality. But uh, coming back to you, uh, Mr. Zara, it would be disastrous if we had to have a second lockdown, wouldn't it? I, I, I believe so, yes. yes. I, it's, it's something that we have to avoid at all costs. Um, we have to, as I said, the gradual reopening has started in respect to the number of flights coming in. I think that was very cautious and it allows us to see the next six to eight weeks, how things develop, and uh, one has to take it step by step. The important thing is we have to start somewhere mm -hmm. and we have to start living our lives as normally as possible. Absolutely. Dr. Spiteri. Dr. Sp so basically I can understand uh, in terms of tourism, economy and uh, whatever affects our country, which uh, I'm into and I can uh, uh, agree with, with some of the statements which are being said. However, health issues uh, should be a priority uh, in, in our country. Um, we have to be on the alert for contact tracing because uh, as, as we can see, the tourists who are coming into Malta are not going to be screened. Um, for the virus. So basically, we are going back to the stage prior to 7th March, when we had the first case. And this might uh, influence our infection rate and possibly causes an increase in number. We have to remember that we are a densely populated country. We are a country which, uh, in terms of numbers, we can contain, as we did, with the adequate uh, factors uh, required. However, if we allow that the viral uh, load increases in terms of infection rate, we could end up with some serious consequences. Mm -hmm. Personally, your personal opinion, uh, Dr. Spiteri, do you actually um, have uh, some recommendations, uh, perhaps something 
that uh, I, I you mean, believe we, we, could we, be we better? We should strike a balance. Basically, our economy is very important for the country, but uh, health issues are a priority. So basically, we have to uh, continue educating our, our people so that uh, we avoid uh, a lot of crowding. Uh, we have to uh, prioritize uh, basic hygiene mechanisms. We have to uh, also try to advise in terms of uh, contacts with possible uh, positive patients, even those who are coming from abroad, so that uh, we, we try to contain as much as possible uh, the infection rate. Because as I'm saying, uh, if we take everything for granted, that could be uh, quite a major health issue, which could eventually influence uh, our economy at the end of the day. Professor Brinkert. Well, as we suggested earlier, in countries which have this high R factor that, that was referring to, I still recommend we test people before they board with the simple pregnancy-like kits, which are not very expensive and can be done very quickly. What we need is specially trained staff, sort of first aiders, basically. And I think this is feasible because... But how do, how do we get this implemented, if, well, if it's a recommendation? I, I, as, as Mr. Zahra has just said, we're talking about maybe 600 tourists coming every day, you know, and we test far more than that in Malta, you know. So if we have good first aiders who train at taking pinpricks on two different cartridges, one for antibodies and one for the virus, then at least we can screen about 85% of the positive ones, remembering that most of the young, healthy tourists coming over can be asymptomatic carriers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if somebody is ill, has got gastroenteritis, can't, sneeze, can't smell or taste, has got a temperature and so on, those are obvious. They'll self-select themselves. The problem are these asymptomatic carriers who might be carrying a strain of virus that we are not used to. Um, and these will only be coming from countries where there's a high infection rate, and then you might get a super spreader. But I'm all for testing before they board, and once they're here, being more relaxed about it. I'd rather, and I'm really quite relaxed once they're over, because mm. if people become symptomatic here, you know, then you can, we can test them in the usual way that our excellent Department of Pathology and Virology and Public Health have been doing. But I'd rather stop them before they board, rather than have them after they board, and give them confidence. After all, I'm happy when I'm screened for guns or screens for weapons or you know nowadays it's become part of part and parcel of traveling mm -hmm. used to, we never used to do this but now we are happy we go through we test ourselves and this should be also part of the protocol a simple test while the crisis lasts anyway mm -hmm. dr spiteri do you agree with uh, with what professor brinkart is saying yes basically professor brinkart is um, telling us that screening is important i fully agree we should have basically a protocol because it's, it's very important that we screen these tourists or whoever is coming over to Malta prior to boarding. Because otherwise, uh, getting over these, these tourists, these individuals, uh, having a flight coming over to Malta and then testing positive once they land in Malta, it's, it's useless and nonsense because they could be infective even on the, on the airplane. So basically, there should be a protocol this should be on a national and international level so that we try to avoid uh, basically contamination uh, in various countries. As I said prior, uh, we are seeing an increased rate. Today, the WHO has said that there is an increased rate all over Europe once the borders have been lifted. We know what's happening in other countries who ex experienced the first wave a long time ago in terms of uh, months, uh, and now they are experiencing the second wave, which is quite on the high side. Thank you very much, Dr. Espiteri. Thank you very much. I wish you a good evening. Thank you. Your comments, Mr. Zara. How can we give people confidence and local people? Local people visit hotels, visit restaurants. Now, once they know that the borders are opening and we're accepting tourists from abroad, we don't want to stop them, stop Maltese people going out and enjoying the summer. Absolutely not. And I still, uh, I, I believe, as I said, that the stakeholders in the industry, be they hotels, restaurants, bars, despite the pressure that that puts on establishments, even financially, have, 
I have seen physically myself being very responsible and respected the orders, requirements and protocols that have been suggested for the, uh, mm. for the industry to take on board. So I think in terms of going out and enjoying yourself and, uh, uh, and enjoying the facilities of a hotel or a restaurant, etc., I feel very confident that things have been done correctly. Now, when you come to the 1st of July and the opening of the airport, remember, it's 27% of what we normally yeah. are receiving, and that is not throughout July, that is only in the second part. Now, that means with load factors of aircraft, I do not expect that every flight is going to turn up 100% full. So you may have uh, even less numbers coming in than expected. Mm. And if the protocols within the establishments are being operated correctly, which I believe they are, yes. uh, then uh, the social distancing aspects and it will, will take place. Sure. A question, uh, Professor Brinkart. Is it mandatory to wear masks on the aeroplane? Uh, yes. yes, yes, it is. I just want to reiterate what, what Warren is here saying. I do agree with him. Uh, uh, that, that the, the, the uh, protocols are being adhered to. And the same applies for hairdressers, restaurants and hotels. I think it's almost safer going to a restaurant or an hotel than congregating on a beach, for example, you know, especially, especially if, you're, uh, if, you're, if you happen to belong to a vulnerable group because the, the restaurants have really gone to town on, on, their, on their... I port. have to say, my experience uh, in the restaurants so since yes. and the hairdressers, yes. people are very vigilant. Yes. I, I have to well, take my yes. hat off yeah. to the Maltese, it, it's I think. Come, it's yeah. comes, yes. It comes naturally because at the end of the day, all the, all the people who are in the industry mm -hmm. have gone through three or four months now of not yeah. having <laughs> any visitors yeah. coming. Yes. That's... that's and, and the last thing that we want is to mm -hmm. bend the rules and then end and up risk. having yeah. risk. So mm -hmm. people will be responsible mm -hmm. by virtue of the nature yeah. of, their, of, of their business. Absolutely. You look, after, you look after mm -hmm. your future. You have to be careful and avoid these pikes and uh, 